Hello guys and welcome back to another thrilling unboxing from your friends at Team Covenant. Robert, Tim, Steven, and uh, we're here with the newest Game of Thrones chapter pack and it is one of the craziest packs Fair that say. we have insane. gotten in Very a long time. This, is, uh, this one's called Ancestral Home and there's just so much to say about this so let's just dive into it and then maybe we'll have some commentary at the end because uh, there's just some juicy or, or midstream or more like it yeah crazy things in happen. i'm going to start out with rinley baratheon probably the best art version of rinley that we've seen that armor uh, is gorgeous really makes me like him more than i ever have to be honest with you mm -hmm. um three three costs which is nice unique lord he's got three strength all three icons prize one and a sweet ability here, marshalling Neil a Brathian character, any Brathian character, uh, to lower the cost of the next character you play this phase by X, where X is the number of prize cards you control, limit once per round. Probably the most essential text mm -hmm. on that card for me. Yep. And it's a great <laughs> safeguard against an effect that could easily be abused by various things that stand really back up, reduce the cost by three or four. Sure. You're getting eight to ten gold for free. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if a deck really wanted to make this a thing. Yeah. Uh, Brathian already has tons of cards to stand stuff. Um, especially the locations that they have, the hammer and and the other one. What's the the stealth one? Do you remember that one? Uh, Smuggler's code. Smug no, no uh, that's, that's the power one. Power King Robert's hammer is the thing that gives it vigilant, isn't it? Yeah, there's two. Fury is there's the two ship? that I always I see. Um, but they have them. You guys know it. We don't play. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they've been but used. They they've been used to abuse maesters before. Yep. You, you've seen all of that kind of stuff. Abusing a lot. maesters. So this, this could also happen there. Uh, but it's a this is a great card. I feel like this is good design. This is I mean, a he's balanced well. Very good, very good card. You can always use him to reduce by one because he mm -hmm. has prize one himself. You get a couple more prize cards out, and this is a an unlimited seat of power in the sense that it's not limited uh, <laughs> seat of power for the rest of the game. And you can kneel just like a one cost dude. You also have Mario Seaworth to stand mm -hmm. stuff back up. So that limit once per round is very important. And it's worth noting he's just a three cost tricon. He's a three cost tricon. Baby. Worth it just for that. He's a lord. No negative traits or anything. So this is a great Rinley. Great addition to just Baratheon. Probably rush some rush builds, some just kind of static builds. Mm -hmm. uh, even a, a Black Cells would probably get down on this guy. That's true. So cheers to Rinley. Rinley. Uh, how about you, Robert? One Lassini? of the kings. Yeah, uh, we have a Lassini Captain coming up next. He's a three-cost Baratheon character with three strength, a military icon with naval support, and then a power icon, smuggler, and captain traded with prized one as a keyword. And then reading, response, after you play Lysini Captain, pay two gold to move all power from a character to Lysini Captain. I think this could never be broken in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> this is, uh, pretty, pretty balanced uh, this is wild. reasonable. This is just such a weird card to me. Uh, it, <laughs> Why is he not unique? It... <laughs> It's a card that obviously you probably have one or two in your black cells, your rare black cells build sure, up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, you got like seven or eight power over there mm -hmm. on that super character. <laughs> as long as it's not the Viper, like, you can just single-handedly win a game that you have been losing yeah. the entire time. Totally. Uh, and that's what really I don't quite understand about this kind of a card. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just takes away the incentive. It's, it's a way to just win a game that you're losing. Which yeah. is weird. It feels very bizarre to me that that's a thing. The thing about this card to me is there's no negative to him at all. <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, he's, he's a three-cost, three, three shrink bicon with an able enhancement with smuggler and captain traits. Yeah, and having prize one at this point is actually more of an advantage, it seems like, for a lot of cards that are coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Then a disincentive uh, to run him. Right. <laughs> which we kind of... <laughs> no one's surprised. <laughs> Everyone, not surprised. Surprised? Uh, but, it, you know, like... What is this really accomplishing in the grand scheme of like increasing strategy, tactics, etc. of a Game of Thrones match? So like now I can't put power on my dudes as mm -hmm. much. Like is it supposed to disincentivize renown or infamy uh, or, or infamy? Or what, I, what else is there to really disincentivize? But I I agree. I think uh, and he's a smuggler by the way and a captain. Both really good traits are now smuggler. Yeah. Especially for uh, black sails. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think this is just kind of like a, hmm, why, why do you even need to exist kind of card? <laughs> um, it, it, I also kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the Nedley uh, spectrum of Thrones players, but this card kind of does something to power that we haven't quite seen before in that it treats power, which in my mind has always been kind of this prestige based kind of right kind uh, of a, uh, resource an abstract entity yeah that that some person has 
just because of whatever they've happened to doing in the game. And now it's this kind of like tangible thing that mm-hmm. it can go from one character to another and be transferred. And it's, I don't like that power on characters can be handled that way just from a flavor perspective. Uh, it doesn't quite jive with the rest of the game. But um, I think overall it's definitely this mechanical thing that is yeah. really curious, especially in combination with uh, Melisandre's favor already. You know, those two are kind of threatening the same kind of action here with just taking advantage of a yeah. really juiced up character, <laughs> even temporarily in Melisandre's favor's case. But this, it's like, oh, well, I got all your power. Oh, well. <laughs> got it. Okay. Get <laughs> It also, I mean, you also have this in with uh, Mel's host or That's whatever. That's true. Mm-hmm. Red Queen's Mel's, Faithful. Yeah, Red Queen's Faithful. Yeah. I always just call it Mel's host. Mel's host. Uh, <laughs> Might a lot as of, well should be. A lot of power manipulation going on with Baratheons. Yes. So we see more of it coming down the pipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, up next we have Warden of the South. It's a zero-cost, unique Baratheon attachment. It is a title. It's prized, too. Hmm. You attach it to your house card, and it has a little response here. And it says, <laughs> after you play a prize card... Kneel the attached house card to choose an opponent. That opponent must choose and reveal a new plot card. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. Very weird out of Baratheon. Very you know, weird of all of the things that yeah. you think Baratheon. But that said, compared to some of the other wardens uh, later on in the pack, I actually like it a lot more simply because it's it's offering something different to Baratheon and even something kind of new to the game. Mm-hmm. This idea of cycling my opponent's plots. Yep. Uh, obviously it triggers off itself, so you at least get one turn out of it, and then Baratheon's at no loss for prize card. I don't think yeah. any house is at this point. And uh, all of them you want to play anyway, so <laughs> a lot of these attachments are great. Um, the best way to utilize this is still a little bit foreign to me. Um, I can see conditional uses for it, like getting me out of a fear of winter turn, or like a really painful plot that you've mm-hmm. just revealed, getting you out of it. Um, even even just making somebody get out of uh, a high power plot, like uh, the Minstrel's Muse or something, it's like, well, I don't want them to get that extra three. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of really good plots, obviously, that your opponent wants to have active. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you can cycle them out. The the downfall, of course, is that a lot of times this isn't going to do what you want it to do. Yep. It's going to put them into a plot that they now, with the knowledge of your plot mm-hmm. and the way that the game has gone so far, you play this card and you make them reveal a new one, they're like, I have an even better plot now for this situation. Yeah. Or I have a river cycle that I'm doing, and now I'm even closer to that crossing the mummers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's those kinds of things that uh, make this, I feel like, a cool card, a balanced card in a way that uh, maybe it becomes better. It's kind of a meta shaker. Yeah. Um, and maybe I just want to get you on Valor as soon as possible. Sure. Like, that's also a good use of it. If I can use this every turn, I can just accelerate you supremely quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might be nice. Isn't there a location that triggers after your opponent reveals a new plot card? Yeah, I think there's a few. There's a few uh, different weird ones. Uh, maybe, which maybe you can accelerate that. Maybe move yeah. play it there. I don't remember any of those effects being particularly, you know, A list. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to feel like there was one that was like <laughs> discard a card from their hand. Mm. I don't know. I got nothing. I don't know. That'd be cool. I wouldn't mind it. I mean, I wanted the south. I don't think we'll see it uh, competitively for a while, if ever. But then again, it was also one of those cards. that's like, ah, oh, this is annoying. <laughs> Cycle me out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Get your one turn closer to their Valor if you're trying to rush to that. I mean, yeah. you, you just kind of have to watch it because it's a plot cycling card. Yes. If, if only because of that, somebody will invariably, I'm sure, find a way to Absolutely. really leverage it hard. And it's a really great way to cause some shenanigans in melee. Yes. Let me tell you. Most certainly. If you want to collude, Whew. that is the best way to do it. Whew. Uh, moving on to the Greyjoy section of the party here. we got a two-cost Iron Islands location called Great Wick. It is unique. And it has a very simple ability. Any phase, Neil Great Wick to choose another location, kneel or stand that location. Seems a lot of pretty things, great to me. A lot of things <laughs> to say about this card. Uh, it, it's a red, it's a red light blinking card to me. Yeah. So hard here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's the kind of card that I just, I know it, it's so strong. I've got one on my deck right now in Greyjoy because it just has so many uses. It's the effect is absurd because you can kneel a location as well. Yep. That feels over the top to me. Um, being able to spot Neil locations as well as stand my own, depending on what the situation dictates, just make this so good. Mm-hmm. Standing up Street of Silk for four introduction, a bloody keep, like the resource advantage you can get from this is pretty obvious. Also, just denying your opponent like influence. You can like absolutely oh, Neil that in that location over there. No, Deny your opponent no. influence, stand up your warships, re-trigger Longshoreman Victory, Maiden's Bane. Uh, a lot of those decks get stronger because of this. Um, you kneel out very important locations like Pentoshi's. Uh, it's just always good. It's it's so good. 
And the, there's a couple problems with this card to me. Uh, red flags for sure is that it's not House Greyjoy only. Um, it doesn't say like Neil to choose another Greyjoy location, which I think would all have been fair balancing mechanisms here. Mm -hmm. Instead, what this says to me is uh, conquest with Greyjoy, some kind of broken combo. Sure. Some kind of stand this location to stand, whether it's an end of the kneeling man, that it, it is limited once per phase, but you could do multiple things over a course of phases. Mm -hmm. um, it's as we talked about the Baratheon standing location, stand a character, kneel to stand it, kneel Great Wick to stand this location, to stand a character. Like, there's a lot of those kinds of interactions that are just going to be around. Yeah. Like, this card will be broken. Yeah, 100%. totally. It will be on a restricted list at some point in the next mm -hmm. month or two, unless things change drastically. I think that's absolutely the case. Um, there's just so many locations that are balanced around being used once. Yeah, totally. And if you can use them twice, it's just kind of like a uh, street wave, honestly. Yes. Like that card is fine until you can abuse it over and over again, and then it's bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we'll definitely see some of the things. <laughs> even if it's, I don't even know, I haven't looked at that Baratheon uh, Altar of Fire type location. Mm -hmm. It's like when a, a discard a card from hand. It's like, could you clear out hands? Could you do plot cycling with it? I mean, we're about to just see some shenanigans. To say, yeah, we're I'm, about to see shenanigans. Either now or in the future, it'll it'll be broken. I think you're right, though. It just kind of it takes things out of the proportionality that they had. All these locations that you are just kind of assumed yeah. to work one time uh, over the course of a round. It's like, well, even twice can be too much on occasion. Yeah, twice can be it just too has much. A ton of utility. It's with no drawback. It's a mechanical card. Mm -hmm. It's just an effect that was going to go on some card, and this is the card, and this is the flavor. But it doesn't really. It's just mechanically, here's how we can mess with things. Yeah. and uh, I'm surprised it's as cheap as it is, honestly, for what it does. Yeah. Like, it's a great card. Yeah. Just fantastic. Or at least, just please put limit once per round on there. Yeah, something. Because uh, if you can start standing this thing up multiple times, mm -hmm. it says, you know, I'm just telling well, at you. Least not, at least there's <laughs> not an easy way to stand up locations, like maesters or anything like that. Wait. Wait a minute. Just wait. Wait a minute. So you're telling me. <laughs> All right, King of the Isles, Robert. Is uh, that you? Oh, that is me. Yes. You're the King of the Isles? I am the King of the Isles, <laughs> uh, which means it costs me one gold to be that thing, and I have to be in Greyjoy. And it's unique. It's a title. It's prize three attached to your house card, and then response after you play a prize card, Neil, King of the Isles. Then, until the end of the round, King of the Isles gains response. Neil, attach house card to cancel a triggered effect. Yay! Does Paul okay. love it? Um, you know, you know what I'm, I'm finding interesting about these titles <laughs> is that they're not House X only. That's true. Which is very bizarre to me that, that I could stack all of these on my house mm -hmm. and just be the king of everything. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe that's Exodia's formed at that point. That's right. <laughs> um, prize 3 is hefty. I mean, that's actually a prize amount that matters. Mm -hmm. uh, like a good attachment removal card at the right time can just straight up win you a game with yep. this card in, uh, in play. Obviously, you get it the first time you play it, and then hopefully every turn after that you get one cancel. Um, you know, it's it's good. The, this effect is really strong. I mean, I think cancel is more important than ever, even though to me the idea of cancel in a game uh, is actually counter fun mm -hmm. uh, at all times. Sure. I mean, just cancel cards are just annoying. They're, they're just not fun to play against, and it quickly becomes... It's already a great joy Martell for me right now is a cancel your cancel your cancel kind of game mm -hmm. which just doesn't feel like there's strategy and tactics going on there it feels like i had more of these in my hand than sure you did. yeah and so i you know strategy we've all put so many resources <laughs> into this thing and then one of us makes it out on top and probably wins that game right uh i think it's easy enough to trigger i think the effect is really strong any triggered effect uh, just the ability to have this on as a as a bang mechanism mm -hmm. of, are you going to trigger this seat of power? Like, are you going to trigger it? Like, Murimur does the same thing for me in marshalling, but this goes farther, and it, it just gives Greyjoy a, a greater amount of control over the way that a phase and a game and a round plays out. Yeah. Uh, so it's great. Like, will I put it in my deck or not? I, I won't <laughs> off the bat here, but... I'm thinking about it. <laughs> decks that want this to work will be able to make it work, and we'll probably have a lot of cancels on top of it. And we're probably doing something that's fairly fragile, but they'll be trying to hold up. Yeah. Uh, so. There you have it. I, I like it. What do you think? Are you guys like cancels? Are you like this kind of a card? I'm, I'm not a big fan of them in general. It's just like, ah, oh, I put all these things in my deck to do these fun things. And then you're just like, no. No, no, <laughs> no, no. no, no. Like, I get that cancels need to exist. But them as an entire theme to me just doesn't seem... Greyjoy Cancel Party is a real deal. It I think that they deal. needed one more, and this is a between mm -hmm. Seasick Finger Dance to be a, to be a Kraken. 
Uh, this is the one. This yep. is the extra one. And then Mur and Mur, and then there's the, the cancelers. And we have another location coming on the pipe. And there's pack. the warship that ruins the first location. River Blockade. River yeah. Blockade. So it's just cancel. It's You're what, it's what Wind is like to call a negative play experience. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there just now. It is that. It is absolutely that. It's very negative. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have Set Sail. It is a House Greyjoy only event and has a response on it that reads After you win an unopposed challenge, Search your deck for a warship location. Reveal it and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Shuffle it. So you're telling yeah. me, all I have to do <laughs> is put this in my deck. You need to tell me. Have it in my hand, <laughs> win an unopposed challenge, <laughs> and then I get a warship in my hand. Right into your hand. I'm going to have to wait until the next marshalling phase to play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this event doesn't see play to me unless it's going to play. Um, yeah. I, I just... There's just no, there's no way a, a deck isn't going to find better event slots. Like, I get that you want Maiden Spain real bad, and that's cool. Like, if you don't want a House of Dreams for it. Uh, but, but why would you not want House of Dreams for it? Yeah, why are you not going to House of Dreams for it? And, and this just, you know, this, this yeah, just isn't you know, it. It's just know. not it. It's just not it. It's just <laughs> yeah, not I agree. It. It's, it's a little bit <laughs> steep of a, a, a triggering effect uh, or cost effect. And then a week. If it was after you won a challenge, resolution effect. Yeah, I, maybe I could see it. Like just the amount of times that this is going to trigger, and it's going to be like worth you putting this event in your deck. Mm-hmm. I just don't see it happening. It feels like even you, you could you could, like after you win an unopposed even, or after you win a challenge, search your deck for warship. You know, kneel a Greyjoy character to put that into play. Sure, or something like that's something to make it happen right that would now. i would play that that feels like setting sail like I, that makes sense but uh having to wait any of those cards like green dreams and stuff where you have to wait till the next this game is too or, fast uh, right brand now. the builder's legacy it, yeah. it, it doesn't really feel like you're setting sail here it feels like you're more like raising anchor or something yeah like that. it's like build a ship yeah build a ship <laughs> we'll get back to it <laughs> in a round <laughs> so yeah That's i don't i think well, i think you guys are probably be uh binding that one there'll be a few enterprising great <laughs> players that will play it in the the standard yeah. main spain style deck or and or like replace some, it eventually. Or if you're yeah. doing some old way thing, you know, there's yeah. there's a potential for that. I just need lo- warships right now. Maybe you're cycling possible. the new Iron Victory. Sure. Trying to abuse that. Sure. But there's, there's some no. loopholes. But in the sure. grand scheme of things, grand scheme, it's just not enough. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Tyrion Lannister, shall we? Is that uh, is that me? Tyrion, Tyrion, right. man. I'll be Tyrion. A four cost, unique lord, three strength, intrigue power icon, prized to you with stealth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's doing Slowly. okay so far. Learned he also has the Learned yeah. Crest, yeah, which is good for Outwit and Skins the Scholar, mm-hmm. which we were talking about earlier. Uh, if you want a challenge in which Tyrion Lannister attacked alone, which should be fairly easy, three strength, intrigue, stealth is a good place to be. Uh, instead of the normal claim effects, reveal a card from the losing opponent's hand at random. You may put that card into play under your control if able, otherwise discard it. So this doesn't work for events, right? Supremely strong effect. No. I don't think you can put events into play, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I think you, you just can play only them. ever play events. That's yeah. what I thought. Just that, that's how my brain works. Uh, yeah. But like I said, on these unboxings sometimes we just don't have we can't stop and just go look things up. So there may be a little the weirdness rules, there. Uh, but to me, even if you can play an event, it's not that big of a deal. What you can do, obviously, is pull really good characters, put them into play on your side permanently. Mm-hmm. Uh, same locations. as attachments locations. Um, Frozen solid. I only have my locations. No. It's it's also it. a cool way to get this as like a first turn, you know, power challenge. Yeah. That entirely. normally does nothing, mm-hmm. uh, more or less nothing. And instead, it even if nothing else, it's extra intrigue claim. Exactly. Which is great. You want to be able to nuke the hand. So this this is so good. I mean, we know this is good. This is very good. This is a supremely strong tier, and maybe the card. strongest tier that we've seen. Yeah. Uh, and then what is the? You guys just got that uh, really sweet event. Podrick. Oh wait, would have been that give a military. Oh yeah, men like, like me gains renown. Mm-hmm. Or, so there's they get a military icon. They don't uh, attack to or kneel to attack or defend military challenges. Nice. Yeah, it's not renown. That's fire made flesh. Yeah, yeah. That's the the better we version wish. of that. <laughs> we wish. And you also just get the Podrick, which gives him a military icon. That's right. So in a perfect world where Tyrion with stealth can win three challenges by himself, that I mean that could be like the end of the game yeah. or the immediate valor. Like, Entirely. If you pull even two characters mm-hmm. or you know two characters in an econ location or or two locations in a dude, you can I believe put like Red Viper into play with this because it's all from hand triggers mm-hmm. uh, and, and you're revealing claim replacement too. I think that kind of circumvents some weird stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, you're revealing cards <laughs> and not discarding them directly, so like it mm-hmm. gets around stuff like. Uh, 
Who's that homeboy? Uh, I know the Dark Star. Dark Star, and That's then true. the new Davos, I think, is it um, that goes in. No, it's uh, Jora. Jora, the new Jora mm-hmm. that goes in. So those are kind of cool. Um, this is supremely strong. Uh, Prior behind the throne. Does that like this? Do you yeah. like this in PBJ? PBJ will like this. It's kind of uh, plot dependent uh, on occasion to really get full utilization out of him. But there are, like we've already said, various uh, events and other things that you can do to get a little bit more mileage out of him. And even just that, as you again already said, that first turn power challenge, going in there and just taking a card uh, that they otherwise would have had and then you're not claiming power anyway from yeah. the house yeah, it's yeah. just wonderful and he makes hoover hill 100 percent obsolete there's yeah there's yeah this is the here. right version of yeah <laughs> <laughs> does uh Lannister have a lot of learn learn the crest no they're pretty light it's uh it's a couple Tyrions, it's a couple Pycelles, and maybe like a, a non-unique or two, but it's relatively limited. I always know you want them to have more. Yes. A few more. But it's cool to get another Outwitter, too. Sure. That's, that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. It opens up Outwit a little bit more. He's a strong card. This yeah, is a strong, strong card for Lannister. It does put something on the table that you have to deal with. It it feels like a uh, like a like just a problematic Pyat Pri kind of card, where you're, yeah. you're going to get torn up by their answers, and there are ways to deal with it, obviously, but you're going to get torn up by it if you don't, like now. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, get rid of this guy now. It's, it's a yeah. problem. He's scary. Um, all right, Robert. Well, talk to us about the Westerlands. It's They're very beautiful looking. Very nice place. Uh, there's a lot of hotel spots still available, <laughs> so make your reservations now. Just kidding. Time share. Um, so this is a unique one-cost Lannister location called the Westerlands, of course. It's Westerlands traded. Whoa. Whoa. That's beautiful Whoa. land there. Uh, um, prized one, and then response after an opponent's character is knelt by one of your card effects. Choose and kneel a location, in parentheses, limit three times per phase. Three Please times per that. phase. Oh, Three times for phase. Limited. Yeah. Excellent. Just do that. That's great. Um, but anywho, this is a great card for Lannister because they're already rolling out with, as we all know, all kinds of kneeling effects uh, all over the place. And what was really limited was, aside from the Alchemist Guild Hall, no real way to leverage kneels against locations. But guess what? Those days are over. Those days are over. And this is Neil's one of my favorite decks, too. You know, oh, it's really yeah. fun to play against. And <laughs> yeah. It's a very positive experience. It's really interactive. It makes you feel really good about all the it's things It's a PPE. You've done. Positive <laughs> experience. Uh, this is a good card, right? right? It's a I mean, fantastic it's a card. It's well costed. The prized one is very light in terms of the negative drawback. Yeah. If you're even going to look at it as that. And it's Locations something... are just like, if you're going to blow up locations, <laughs> is this the one you're going to blow up? You like. Yeah, I don't know. But it's... most importantly, this gives Lannister, for the first time ever, a real uh, counterbalance against Targaryen Burn, uh, which has more yes. or less always been a perennial thorn in Lannister's side. So now you can play this card and really go to town if you have the Neil effects present. Really go to town in their influence providing locations, which is how they're going to try to really get ahead of you yeah, uh, and yeah. stay ahead of you in those particular matchups. So it's nice to see this. Um, kind of remains to be seen how functional it will be in the game just because I've always felt in, uh, that Neil is not something that you can really kind of mainline, but it's a yeah, supplement to what Lannister supplement. wants to do. Um, just because... It's too easy to disrupt a hyper nil deck. Uh, they're very fragile, but uh, I, I like it. It's a, it's a good at least one of in most Lannister decks as it is right now. I love it, love it. A little more location control, but in a very Lannister way. It's like yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good way to do that. Exactly. Sure. All right, up next we have the Warden of the West. That's beautiful. Art. It is a two cost unique attachment for Lannister. It's a title. It's prized three. You attach it to your house card. Uh, response after you play a prized card. You kneel the attached house card to choose a kneel a character, and then you discard all power off of that character. Kneel a character, discard it. So even at just two costs, a two cost kneel that comes into play immediately, uh, just from Warden of the West itself. Sure. That's a good little trick. Yeah. And then you know you play a Westerlands and you trigger this again. Kneel mm-hmm. a character, kneel a location. I feel like these two tools have taken Hyper Kneel to a level where it can be. It used to be the 10 to 15% of your Lannister deck that mm-hmm. just kind of had the control elements. Now it can go to like 30, yeah. 30 to 35, even 50. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, yeah, a very dedicated Neil deck, and then they're supplementing it with like power grabbing and, sure. and good characters. Uh, it's This is great, man. I, yeah. I really do think this is strong. Yeah, worth noting, though, you can only use it once once a turn because mm-hmm. you have to kneel that attached house card just like all the other tiles. But yeah, this is a, a neat card. It's kind of like an attachment version of Castle of the Rock. Uh, just because here's a, another thing that just by playing 
another card, uh, you get to get some automatic kneels happening yeah. and all that good yeah. stuff, which is nice. And the power disc card, that's uh, an almost classic Lannister type effect. You don't see it happen that much because they're usually somewhat conditional, but uh, this is probably one of the more reliable ones we've it, seen in it, a while. It's cool. But it it takes us back to kind of what you're talking about with the Lysini Pirate, the stealing mm -hmm. of power. Yeah. Right? Like, this, on the other hand, feels very thematic to me. Mm -hmm. It's like a Lannister discarding all of the power on a character, I can totally make flavor sense yeah, of that. Yeah, it's like a smear campaign. Yeah, man, it's like, on. no, yeah. yeah, we blacklisted you, <laughs> like, we've started all these rumors, we've got our spies out, or whatever, like, no, this guy's worthless. Yeah. He's, he did not actually kill this guy, he did not actually do anything <laughs> worthwhile. Um, so I like that, it's really thematic, and I think between this and the Westerlands, you have now the, the breadth mm -hmm. of Neil effects to consistently kneel out two-ish characters a turn, if oh, not for more. sure. Uh, and like really consistently do that. And like, I'm just thinking about a turn where you have Warden of the West out, or you have a uh, Castellan out and Warden of the West, you play that Westerlands, mm -hmm. and it's like you trigger Castellan, you trigger Warden of the West, then you trigger Westerlands and you know location. It's like, that's a super strong turn. Yep. That's some pretty common and low cost of cards together can make happen every single turn. Mm -hmm. uh, well done. I, I think that's cool. And I'm, I'm happy to see Lannister moving in this kind of classic direction. We haven't seen a lot of this kind of yeah. annoying Lannister meal for a while. And, and I actually do enjoy it in the sense that I can I can totally get owned by it. And it, it feels lannister -y as as much as you hate it. And as a great joy player, you can just cancel this. That's things. right. Just cancel. Go back <laughs> to that old old game. I don't like the things he's doing to me, so I should probably try to stop them. Just say no. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, the Martell section of uh, the pack here. The Dorn Loyalist kicks us off. A three-cost, a non-unique ally... How many of those does Martell need to have? Uh, three More. strength, military intrigue, pretty standard icon spread for Martells here. Prized two and stealth. Amazing. Uh, Neil, a prized character to cancel the effects of a character ability just triggered. Mm. Uh, this is... This is more cancel for more Martell, cancel. which they, they've been fairly limited, right? They've had He Calls It, and that is more or less it uh, yeah. of things that are actually getting played. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorn Loyalist both adds and subtracts from this house to me. Um, prize two ally at three cost is pretty heavy. Steep, yeah. Especially whenever you can't cancel the dissension because you can only cancel character abilities that were just triggered. Yeah. Dissension, not a response. Uh, a lot of those come into play responses that discard allies will be able to be canceled by the Dorn Loyalist himself, so it protects you against that kind of thing. Yep. Um, although Varies, I believe, is a uh, passive. Mm -hmm. I don't even yes. think that's a trigger. Correct. Um, so... It, it's kind of one of those things on the bubble. It has a decent icon thing. It's what you'd expect in Martell. There's tons of better characters that have that if that's what you're looking for. Stealth is nice in this mm -hmm. house. Always uh, good on like to be Stealth is always nice. to the spears. But what you're looking for really is a way to solidify some kind of combo that you have going. Yeah. And Doran Loyalist being a way to prevent something that would muck that up. Right. And uh, whether that's the suppressin that just makes everyone discard down to four, being a foil to bloodthirst and, a, mm -hmm. and kind of a halfway, you can cancel that kind of stuff. Uh, as long as it's triggered, which I believe it is. I I don't know. Will you, will you see this? Maybe. I, I feel like it's like if my combo's in place, I put up a Doran Loyalist wall and, and... I just don't see finding the deck space for this card. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a, a tough sell, I think, for most players. That ally trait is really just the bane of this thing. I feel like it's just a, a large cost for something that you want on a small cost kind of unit. Yes. Because you only really want it for this ability. Mm -hmm. you know, let's face it. If you want the icons and the stealth, you can find it somewhere else. It's true. And it's not even Dorn traded. No, it's not. Or, so sad. Or anything cool like House <laughs> Dane or something, something that would turn it into a different kind of card. Uh, so we'll uh, see. I don't know. It's kind of another one of weird Martell cards where it's like, in a month, is this going to be restricted? Like, we don't know. Yeah, we maybe, don't know. Maybe. We, we can never call it very well in the Martell cards. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about Prince of Dorne, speaking of things that might get restricted. Princes, man. <laughs> um, so, Prince of Dorne, a one-cost Martell attachment. It's unique with the title trade prize three attached to your house card reading response. After you play a prize card, Neil, attached house card to look at the top five cards of your deck. Add one of those cards to your hand and shuffle the others back in. 
Oh man, I there's just a no, there's not enough ways for me to say how much I dislike this card <laughs> from a very visceral design standpoint. <laughs> you get one word. <laughs> Boo. Um, okay. Pineapple. So every problem that happens in House Martell is with too ready and easy access to cards. Real quick segue. Did you notice those blood oranges? Yeah. Okay. I did. And that that's great. I mean the house card is great. The, everything in there is great. Literally everything that gets broken in Martell is too easy access to cards. Almost everything that mm -hmm. gets broken in this game is too easy access to cards. Yep. This isn't card draw. It again circumvents the very mechanic that's supposed to prevent this kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't even reveal, for goodness sakes. You just add a card just to your hand one. in the top five. It's filtration. Mm -hmm. It allows you to go find your much and more to, to continue the chain. It allows you to go find any kind of card that you might need. You're always going to have a prize card if you want it, yep. um, if you want to play this, because you're going to be running rivers, you're going to have as many cards as you want, you're going to play prize cards, which gets you even more cards than you want, you can now find your prince's plans and recur things, and start chains, start cycles, start combos. Yeah. This is a big problem. I think this is a bad card. I mean, it's just... This does nothing for the game. I agree. Like, nothing. I, I agree. I think... Uh, and we, it's redundant. Yeah, we, we've talked about this a lot, especially locally here in Tulsa, about... Uh, kind of needing to reassess uh, whether or not there should be a couple new additions to like the core rule mechanics. Uh, one of those being that we've talked about a static uh, draw or reveal or all that. The yeah. same cap is Capping in place everything. for any amount, any effect that would add cards to your hand. Um, and I think that there, there's a lot, not only a lot of merit to that, but I think this is the kind of card that adds more merit to that. Uh, because how many more options do they need to have effects like this that are essentially unrestricted? Yeah. Uh, not in the, like, this is a restricted card sense, but in that you could more or less do this as much as you want, albeit you do have to kneel your house card again. Um, how many more times do they just need to have all the cards in their deck? I just don't, yeah, I just don't two. get this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at something to give Martell and it's like, I've got an idea. Let's give them cheap and easy card draw that gets around draw cap. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, have we been down this road? Yeah. yeah. Let's, like, there's no deck that plays this that isn't a supreme combo control deck. Oh, totally. And, like, is this what we're wanting to encourage is these, like, things that just chain out weird stuff that's not thematic. Mm -hmm. Just dislike completely. Yeah. I have nothing good to say about that card. Oh. All right, up next <laughs> we Sorry. have... The, and it's not fair to Martell players because not, they're the, forced into a style of play that, like, look at these two cards. The art is nice. Look at the two cards they've gotten in this pack. What does that tell Martell players to do? Just complete, draw out your deck and play unfun things. Like, yeah. the, it's not Martell players' fault. No. It's not their not fault at all. at all. Like, if you want to play a house stain deck, it's just not as good. Mm -hmm. So give us good decks that aren't just, like... Annoying draw 20,000 cards. Yeah. All right, up next we have Hoster Tully. Just it's you. a one cost unique Stark <laughs> character. It's two string power icon, Lord and House Tully traded. He's prize one. He's also a uh, noble crest. He has a response. After he leaves play, search the top five cards of your deck for any number of House Tully cards, reveal them and add them to your hand, shuffle the other cards back into your deck. Love support for this theme. Speaking of the opposite of what we just saw yeah. in Martel. Uh, okay, play dudes and win challenges. This I don't know that you would run this over the other Tully, though. Exactly. That's the, other the thing, right? Thing. The other one's plus one all house Tullys, right? And yeah. zero cost, yeah. is that right? Or is he a one? He's zero cost. Is he zero? Wow. I remember him I'm pretty being sure. weird. It's either one or zero. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's zero. I, I, don't, know, zero. I don't know if I told Zero so. strength. Yeah, he's zero strength. zero strength. Yeah, and all house Tullys get plus one. <laughs> um, first of all, house Tully is bawling here. That cloak thing that he has on, Peacock thing fishes fishes yeah fish it looks so awesome it like that kind awesome. of a scale cloak it would be my jam 100 percent of the time if i could <laughs> uh like look at that can you imagine it's if you could just posh. make one of those it's and just like wear posh. it around yeah it's like oh, i have nothing to wear <laughs> look at me and my nobility <laughs> he is a lord and he's house tally um you know as a star player tim you know that one of the greatest things that you can have is the ability to add cards to your hand. It's true. Uh, and you can put any number of House Tully cards into your hand, which is awesome. So that's going to keep the juice going. You can also do that with Family Duty Honor. That's true. Why not both? Because you can get plus one strength to all of your Tullys. That's true. I mean, I think it really comes down to what... I think you try them both, right? And you mm -hmm. see what your deck really needs. Do you really need that plus one strength to win and defend the challenges that you had to defend? Right. Uh, or win. And if you do that without plus one strength, this guy's a bomb. If you need the plus one strength to make it tick, you know, or one of each. Let the deck tell you which one you need. I just think in general, you know, the, the plus one strength just helps so much against so many things. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you're playing burn? 
Well, this, this guy helps me. This guy helps me. Well, burn, burn him first. I'll burn yeah, totally first. Which yeah. is fine. <laughs> which is perfectly fine. And then you're not also giving them power. It, it's just, yeah. All right. I'm buying it. I think it's a good idea. I think yeah, it's a reasonable card. It doesn't I think it's make fine. anything like obsolete. No. Both are applicable. Not Both are at cool. All. Correct. Uh, what about Blackfish? Hero. Is this me? Am I on Blackfish? Yes. You're Blackfish. Four cost, the Blackfish, unique, three strength, military power, Lord Knight, House Tolly, I believe, and the Warcrest. Did the other Blackfish have the Warcrest? Uh, he's a noble. He is noble. Yes, okay, correct. so this is Warcrest Blackfish. Blackfish. Prize to Renown. Uh, While well, the Blackfish is attacking, each character that dies for military claim gains prized one. Pretty sweet. I he's think, pretty swanky. I think he's pretty swanky, but like he's he's not the Blackfish you go to. You go to the, the other Blackfish because yeah. he draws you a card. Mm-hmm. Like, let's face well, it. Well, with rivers these honest. days. That really is true. As much card draw? That is true until the rivers get nuked, which you probably will. Um, <laughs> Eventually. But this to me screams Siege, right? This oh, is yeah. Siege. Oh, yeah. Definitely Siege. This but is just a in siege general, rush turn one almost. Yeah, to me though, it, it just screams bastards boys. Well, like, that's true. Just raising the like, I have a two claim bastards of boys with the military and, and various it's murder effects. Claim. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can work in here. Well, that's that for military claim for the prize one. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I, that's claim. what I, I was. Yeah, there it is. I was wanting them. <laughs> I was wanting it to be a little more open ended, so yeah. no quarters and your die by his count as yeah, well. Yeah, that would true. be insane. Just for that would be really cool, but it feels like the it, blackfish. Yeah. It feels like the blackfish. Yeah. The the, the ah, thing just um, raise your claim. Like you will run this one over the other one in a dedicated murder deck. I feel. Yeah. 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 I can it's see just that too. Way better. Mm-hmm. It's great. Art Again, too. another pretty good like analog, you know, between the two blackfishes. This is you want both of them. Like neither is obsolete compared to the other one. So that's true. Different play styles, different decks, different builds. We'll Options. Yep. This guy's it's great though. You know, high claim and just trying to if you can do multiple. Well, even just a two claim military challenge. It's like, well, I get renown, I get two from the prized, and then you kill two characters. Kill two mm-hmm. characters, and then I also get an intrigue and a power challenge coming at you. Yeah, yep. that's huge. Yeah, that's three power just off a military challenge. Mm-hmm. And then if you're running siege, five power. power adds up quick. I like it. <laughs> I like siege. Oh, it's and you have a way to stand him up, and then you do it again. Kill them. A, a second military challenge. Kill them. I'll bet you can find a way to stand him up. Too. I don't know to be a wolf. Uh, there's lots of there's, <laughs> not, there's not many stand effects in this game. How about Warden of the North, not Robert? Me. All right, Warden of the North. They it, got some weird pieces <laughs> there for the their armies. Dark title. It's one cost. It's unique. It's a title, of course. It's prize two attached to your house card, and then reading response. Nice After you play a prize card, Neil attached house card to choose a character. Not the Red Viper. Um, <laughs> that character gains stealth and does not kneel to defend until the end of the round. Wah, wah. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. <laughs> it's okay. It's not anywhere near as powerful as the other ones. No. Yeah, that's a, undoubtedly true. Um, so first of all, <laughs> Tim turns to me and says, is that guy playing a saxophone? <laughs> uh, which is fair on the, uh, on the army pieces there. It is weird that they have this anthropomorphic army piece thing going on. Those are wolves, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a couple lines. There's some lines who wolves. are not playing saxophones. <laughs> it looks like one of the wolves might be playing a drums or something. Yeah, I know. The one in the back's playing drums. They gotta keep tabs on their armies and their bands. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is playing bass. Without a we need to get our bass the drum over. The musical stylings of the Stark <laughs> army. Are oh, the lions riding gargoyles? Is that what that is? Is that a gargoyle? Well, let's hope so. Uh, uh, let's talk about how this card actually interacts with the game. Uh, I... It just promotes the defend deck more. Mm-hmm. I like it. I mean, I feel like the Starks consistently get their themes bolstered, uh, but their themes are just too wholesome to ever really pan <laughs> out. You know, it's like, oh, yes, yeah, so we defend challenges. And it's like, well, we'll kneel all those dudes. We have very <laughs> successful in defense. <laughs> we'll yes. kneel those dudes. We'll take these guys' icons. We'll just West Coast bleed you. We'll we'll intrigue challenge you. Cycle into Valor. It's like everyone's doing tricks at the Starks. And it makes sense, mm-hmm. right? This is the Stark game this yeah. is them the from the books game. the start tricks are i'm gonna execute you. yeah <laughs> i'm gonna be noble and do predictable uh <laughs> but hey you can't deny that this this ability is great you, it's very nice it's good slap it on a big old tricon i like the turtley decks I yeah mean, they're, they're entertaining they don't always do as well as you might like but it's a nice mechanic that or theme that if it gets the right mechanics bolstered to it uh it could be viable yes i think that uh, it's later good. date Maybe now it's or just in the, future. the thing about it is Stark. I don't think has a ton of prize cards that are really that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you have the Sansa that's good. You have the Catelyn that's okay, and then 
you know, blackfish now if you're doing that. Yeah. But like just in Every, general, yeah. How many how many star I mean, prize cards can you think of that you've been seeing in play? None. But do you Im- you could import some weird stuff? Maybe here's here's what I'm. What about Stark Knights Watch? You throw defenders in via the wall, and then it's uh-huh. like. Don't kneel to defend. Yo ho! They got all three <laughs> icons. Night's Watch gives all three icons. Maybe Wildlands. That's true. With the, with the Wildlands, they come in now. Uh, probably. As yes. a defender. <laughs> I think they do. Participating, yeah. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> what about Wilding Hordes, you know? You could throw up some Wilding Hordes. Because any character, I, that's the thing I'm trying to abuse, is like, it doesn't say Stark character and it doesn't say Stark <laughs> prize character. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Uh, it's yeah. just underwhelming compared to the other ones. Yeah. Now that's said, there are some choice characters that this could go on, like the uh, the Catelyn Stark that blank strength and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean that's true. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're at Frozen <laughs> it's, Outpost it's there. Plus, plus this, a couple other things. You have a a pretty it's, it's there, but like we already defending. are really good at defending. It's true. Now you're better. <laughs> but now you're better. I and mean, Lannis is better at kneeling. <laughs> Defend that. What characters? <laughs> My next... Yeah, give me that Horse Lord. Horse what? Lord! The most emo version of Cal that we will ever see. I don't, this isn't Cal. Ah, well, that's It's true. just a Horse Lord. It's just it's random. It's a two-cost, u- non-unique Horse Lord. Targaryen card. <laughs> it looks like Cal. Well, I gotta ride around all day. It's, just, it's a two-cost... <laughs> emo Cal. Uh, two-cost, two-strength Dothraki character with a power icon. He's prize one. While he is participating in the challenge, characters with more than one icon do not count their strength. Seems all right. So anytime there's power things going on, it seems like Air of the Iron Throne Dothraki is still trying mm-hmm. to be a presence yeah. thing. And Prize has actually helped that deck. I mean, it helps to get them power yeah. on their opponent's house cards. It's crazy how much it's helped. Uh, so yeah, he slots in there. I mean, you know, it, it, we've seen this temple before. It's not mm-hmm. lighting the world on fire, but it's good. It's a little Dothraki card. There's already plenty of Dothraki to go around though, and I don't know that this guy brings enough to the table. Without something like Renown or, uh, you know, Stealth or something cool. I don't He's know. He's a little bit higher costed than I would have expected. Yeah. This, but, you know. It may make it hard for them to steal power back from you. True. If that's a thing that you're concerned about. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is it is one of those weird Dothraki cards where it's like every Dothraki board that I see is like 20 dudes. Mm-hmm. And it's not about <laughs> losing those challenges. No. You, know, you can have anything that you want. Uh, it's about preventing the valor. It's about preventing the intrigue challenge and kind of trying to play around that. So I feel like it's kind of doing something that the Dothraki already do, which is win power challenges. Yeah, I think that's correct. Uh, and I think that's going to hold it back. <laughs> do I get to talk about Danny? I think we can just skip this. It's not we, that good. Can we have a moment of silence for the game as we know? A moment of silence for Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> the game that we once knew. Uh, Daenerys Targaryen is at three costs, or my favorite way of saying this is Daenerys. De- which I feel like is Daenerys. A, it's a classic, classic way to pronounce that. It feels old. Say it one more time. Daenerys. 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 Daenerys, Daenerys is Targaryen. It's very Greek. Targaryen. Yeah, exactly. It sounds kind of like a Latin Targaryen Greek or thing. Targaryen. Yeah. <laughs> Targaryen. I mean, there's a gar there. You see <laughs> that gar? I do see that. Targaryen. She's riding a gar. Uh, yeah. Three costs. Daenerys Targaryen. She's unique. She's a lady and a queen. Those are great traits. Double Red threat. wedding Watch aside, out. yeah. Uh, four, four strength. <laughs> three costs, four strength. Three costs, four strength. Two icons. Intrigue power. Aww. Prize two makes it okay, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but three costs, four strength, two icons is a rare thing to see these days, uh, and it's just it's just good. Normally, the character would stop there, honestly. But wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. After you <laughs> declare Daenerys Targaryen as an attacker, choose a character without attachments controlled by the defending player. If you win the challenge, kill that character. Yeah. This this is. I mean, I think people are right to well. People being us, at least, and you know, talking about this card when it first came out, and it was spoiled a, a bit back. Uh, this is just a real weird precedent to set for the game. Mm-hmm. This is this is this card is single handedly thrown out. It's it's literally like all precedent is gone. Yeah. At this point, for card design, for for balance, for power level, for like, there's power creep in ways. You know, when we see it, new effects, yeah. redundancy of effects, breadth of effects causes things to be better than they once were. Um, but this character is so blatantly outside of the balance template. Why is this not House Targaryen only? I just have no idea. Like, there's a lot of real question marks for this card. Um, one is why is there no limit per round? Exactly. Uh, one is why is it not House Targ only? Mm-hmm. One is why is it not when she's attacking alone? There's just we've already seen cards of fairly a similar make, similar effects. Yeah. That this just blows out of the water. So what if it read after 
Daenerys kneels as an attacker. That's something, maybe. I mean, that's sort of a, like the that's a way to boys. make it even still way too good, but but worse. Yeah. Um, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to do this, right? I think, right? Even just after you declare Daenerys as an attacker with a dragon character, sure. Or with I mean, a, she's riding with or alone. another dragon character, or alone, mm-hmm. uh, or with two additional dragon characters, mm-hmm. like. This effect is so strong. It's like, it, your better. board gets completely wrecked. You have Fire Moon Flesh event now that gives her doesn't yield to attack and renown. Mm-hmm. So you can trigger this as much as you want. There are easy ways to give this character, make her a tricon. Easy ways to stack her up with crazy things. Easy way to even make her noble crested. It's it's so crazy yeah. uh, to me. And you have long lances and ambushing, standing her back up. It, mm-hmm. It's uh, such a problem for me. This is just this makes every other Danny not great. And she's a queen. Yeah, let's not forget that. The only other <laughs> Danny that, that has a, an impact is the Dragons Don't Kneel Danny. Exactly. I would almost say though that even here, you this is this a stronger. Mm-hmm. Just this is a power card. Yeah. Whether or not your dragons make it, maybe they all die. Throw this Danny out, and you still are just board destroying. Mm-hmm. Crazy. It's fairly unprecedented just how lethal this can be. And. Let it be known that this is not claim replacement, right? which makes it even worse. Mm-hmm. She, she's doing an intrigue challenge, getting intrigue claim, killing a character. Yep. <sighs> same with power. Same for maybe military. Yeah, it's just it's a head scratcher for me. Yeah. Honestly. It's, just, it's just really potent, and um, I think at least it should have been four costed. At least four. Um, I'm not... Maybe four cost three strength, at least. Yeah. and and But even by being three costed, that opens up all kinds of... Uh, stuff like just to be a dragon, best example. To be a dragon and even ambush, right? Ambush yeah. from the plains, I believe, is three mm-hmm. costs or less to you. And it's just really, <laughs> yeah, really. Yep. It's know. it's a whopper. Uh, you're gonna, you're going to have to deal with it. The art's really good. Like like you're saying, I mean, it's okay. it's just <laughs> such a potent card that there's it's going to be really hard for any Targaryen player to not throw it into their deck, no matter whatever else they're doing. Yeah. So. Be ready for this to just be around. It'll be around forever. Yeah. Let's hope there's never a Danny that's stronger than that. It's pretty okay. good. Goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right. <laughs> Next up, we've got a cow. It is the Targ attachment. Um, excuse me, title. It is a title traded, of course, and it has price two. Attach your house card and then response. After you play a prize card, Neil attach house card to choose a character. That character gains deadly and, quote, does not kneel to attack or defend during crown challenges, end quote, <laughs> until the end of the round. Okay. This screams heir to the Iron Throne. This right? screams so heir to the Iron Throne. But uh, I don't know if it does enough, honestly. I- if it was that character against Renown, it doesn't need to attack or defend during mm-hmm. power. That that juices that deck that up hard. It's upset. just it's a solid cheap supplement to it's playing solid. the power game that Targaryen is already inclined to play. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So it's just like, oh, why not? You probably put one in your air to the Iron Throne. Exactly. Yeah. Why, why didn't the Stark one be attack and defend? Come on. I don't know, man. They're the Turtle House. Yeah, the turtle house. They can't attack. Turtle, Come on. Turtle, Stark's turtle. an attack, right? Boring. Yeah, uh, we get this it. is just kind of yes, Cal. We get it. We, uh, it's a redundant effect there. Up next, we have a neutral card that is named Heron Hall. Really good art on this. It is too. unique. It's two cost. Like I said, it's neutral, so anyone can play this card. Any house. Especially neutral faction. Uh, it's prized two. It is, says if Heron Hall has three or more gold tokens on it, discard it from play. Cannot be saved. Cannot be saved. And it has a little response on here, and it says, kill a character you control to cancel a triggered effect, then place one gold token on Heron Hall. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Um, <laughs> this card makes waves in this game, right? There's been a lot of talk about both good and bad of this card, and whether or not it's put in your deck, not put in your deck. Um, it's the, the problem to me with the card is the, the unlimited response ability during Valor turns. That's that's the one thing that feels sloppy mm-hmm. about this to me that we just kind of found out. I, I'm almost certain of it just from, from talking to players and looking at the timing structures that uh, you can trigger this endlessly during the save cancel window yep. because it doesn't check for itself um, until after that. So uh, you can literally just cancel saves during a valid. Everything that's dying already. Anyway. Everything that's dying anyway, you can kill it because, <laughs> yeah. as we found out, this is it was news to me when I found this out. Yeah, it was kind of a shocker. At, once the Valor is triggered, <laughs> the Wind Revealed effect is triggered, the cards don't go moribund until after the save cancel. So you actually save cards before they're moribund. Um, whereas I thought they went moribund and then you pulled them out mm-hmm. via the save uh, save cancel effect. So Morbund. that's different. Um, so you can just 
Can't kill things that are slated to die for Valor to cancel any kind of effects. Um, that, I think including that's pretty, the saves. Yeah, including <laughs> and not limited to yeah. including the saves. So this really... What I don't like is that it, again, kind of creates huge incentive to run binders because now even dupe saves aren't doing are anything risky. for you. Yeah. Um, Greyjoy gets hurt by this, I think, more than most uh, just because that yeah. is a key part of their you know mid-game tempo is to not be affected by the Valor so much. Uh, it gives everyone really easy access to cancel, mm -hmm. right? But what you have to ask yourself is that that's good for the game. It, I've seen actually and heard tale of it, more than a few collectible card games that devolved into the slap fight of cancel, 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 cancel. Yep. Oh, I got through. Mm -hmm. uh, and that being really the game that you're playing is does he have three cancels or two? Um, so I don't really like the idea of, of just everyone just canceling everything. It's like we play cards for reason to use effects, and if the effects are too strong, that's that card's fault. It's not yeah. a now we need to be able to cancel all effects because some of them are too strong. That just makes all effects weaker and less cool. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. My my thoughts on this card are not ultimately positive. I think <laughs> I, I don't like it that much. It solves some short term problems. Yes. Like, Things that are broken can be stopped by mm -hmm. everyone at least if you have it out and they don't have an answer for your location. Right. Or their own here in hall to cancel your here in hall. Uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. What do you think, Tim? Are you a Sarg player? Are you going to run this no. over the other one? No. Yeah. The other one's just so It's, it's all you got. <laughs> it's like your long trip iron victory. It's all I, uh, it's all I got. Yeah, can I ever what about Lannisters? Do Lannisters run this, you think? Lannisters would probably be pretty inclined to run this. They've got a lot of weenies uh, that kind of do their trick and then you're ready to discard them so uh killing them to cancel uh especially because there's a lot of things that at least when i'm playing lannister uh feels like if i could just cancel this one mm -hmm. or two things can make all the difference in how this game's going to play out so yeah for sure is there a way to remove gold tokens from locations i uh, not that i'm aware not of, that I'm aware of not that i'm aware of mm -hmm. uh, and let's hope there never is but there, the other thing with this card that I was thinking was interesting is that it can cancel Outwit. I believe Outwit is the only yeah, triggered, triggered effect that's applied. That's true. So Heron Hall kind of diminishes that kind of tech as well, mm -hmm. is the ability to cancel the Valor is now diminished. Yep. Uh, so you can guarantee the Valor goes off, you can guarantee that nobody saves from it, and it, it just feels it feels a little bit too leveragey. Um, I really did wish it say, kneel it, kill a character, and then cancel a triggered effect, so you could only use it once yep. uh, in a given instance. I would like that a lot more. I think that's fine and uh, still keeping with the flavor of the card. Mm -hmm. But as it is, man, I think we're going to see it. And, and the impact it's going to have is really meta dependent. If everyone's yeah. running it, then everyone has to keep running it. If nobody's running it, then nobody runs it. Yeah. Uh, but if I have to Heron Hall, you're Heron Hall, then all of a sudden we're down that rabbit hole. Grr, I'm not yeah. so sure I like yeah. that. I don't think anybody will. Uh, why don't you tell us about the Brave Companions? Or was that me? It's you. It's you. All right, then I will tell us about the Brave. <laughs> Talking to myself. Uh, one cost, Brave Companions, a unique title in the uh, same style as all the other houses. Neutral House appears to get one here. Prize one, attached to the Neutral Faction House card. So you must be playing Neutral to run this, unlike the other ones where you can just throw them on any house. Um, after a Neutral character you own leaves play, Neil Attached House card to attach that character face down to the Brave Companions instead. Uh, Neil Attached House card during the marshalling phase, so return an attached face down character to your hand. Um, going to your hand, uh, it, the recurring of characters seems good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I, I, haven't, I haven't run into like Neutral House enough to know if there's problematic. I mean, maybe it's things like this, Zolo or whatever. This you can would prevent... Gold. Like he, I could pick in one of my initial characters and one of your characters with cold hands, and then put them here instead of, right? I don't know. Does leaving play the same as remove? After from neutral character, you own leaves play. Neil attached character to attach that character face down instead. Yeah, probably. But I don't know if the cancellation of the cost. No, it's an effect, right? It's and isn't effect. that a destination yeah. thing at that point as well? We don't know, man. We don't know. It's very confusing. <laughs> Hands up. Sorry. Uh, but yeah. So let's think of it from just a. a Neutral house card, kneel it. I think it's a it's a reasonable thing. I you mean, have to kneel it to do both either of them. Yes, um, it, it's it's controlled in that you have to do this kneeling thing. It's uh, trying to supplement a side of the game that generally doesn't see too much play, if any, at least locally, uh, as far as we can see. Um, so I, I really don't have any problems with it. I'm kind of uh, 
anti Nedley on this. I, I don't know the, uh, the exact flavor behind the Brave Companions in terms of like having somebody who conceivably could be dying uh, suddenly mm-hmm. coming here and all that kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. It's, it's a neat effect. Uh, if it gets more people playing Neutral House, I think that's a worthy enterprise at this point because the variety there, I think, yeah. is just too strong to not it, have. It seems pretty much like you run a long voyage deck. Mm-hmm. You just draw as much as you can. You play out as many things as you can. And then whenever something would die, it goes back to your hand and you play it again. It's just yeah. kind of that, that train of consistent mm-hmm. pressure on the board. Uh, which is fine, and then maybe it can be abused in some way with some neutral that comes into play effects being used over and over again. I, I'm not that cool on the neutral stuff to know, but it's also nice to protect things like Preston mm-hmm. and uh, various things. I, how this interacts with Shadows cards Ooh. is all very confusing to me as well. And When it returns to Shadows, Ooh. it hasn't left play, but it is... Shadows is not an out-of-play area. Correct. But it has some weird interactions too, so I don't think it would work there. But at least if Preston's going to die, you can put him back in your hand and, and then throw it out there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's Brave true. Companions. Questions and as few answers as, as we have. As we can for provide that. you, yeah. Uh, but finish us off here, Robert, with uh, a new agenda. A new agenda it is. It is called Dark Wings, comma, Dark Words. And it's uh, your favorite raven feeding agenda of all time. <laughs> um, and it's an agenda, as we said. Uh, your minimum deck size is 75 cards. Whoa. You cannot have more than one copy of each uh, event card by title. That's an interesting uh, wording there. Yeah. In your deck, uh, you cannot trigger event card effects from your dead or discard pile. Yes. Very interesting. Okay. And then That's response. Important. After you play an event card, draw one card. Correct. That's it. And of course, this is a world championship card. This is, uh, how interesting is this? Um, how interesting is this card? Um, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much where it lies. It is very yeah. interesting. I mean, it, it opens up a broad, <laughs> broad, no. a broad swath of new and exciting deck building opportunities. But I, I really don't think that you're going to see I a get the viable idea. deck come out of this thing. I get the idea behind this deck. I want you to have a toolbox of events and then reward you for playing those events. But, no. I... Okay, so... Okay, it's weird. Well, you have have to just think about it. So, 75 card decks, what does that do, big picture, to your deck? So, 75 card decks decreases consistency. What does running one copy of every event (laughs) also do? Running one copy of each event card... In an already larger deck. Maximally decreases uh, consistency unless there are three events that do very similar things you can have one of each sure so you're essentially running three of and then the extra card draw kind of helps to leverage that a little Mm -hmm. bit but but again it's draw it's not like it's draw it's not a real you know it doesn't the game doesn't care so much about draw anymore Mm -hmm. um every event replaces itself where where do you run this out of what what house makes best use of this maybe targaryen with a bunch of just weird burn but hollow hill is just so much better there like dragon pit is so much better there Mm -hmm. There's not a deck right now that's running one of events. No. Right? With good reason. Like, even 60-card <laughs> decks right now have no reason to run one of each event. Yes. Uh, is drawing a card after you run, after you play an event, enough to make that a thing? No, and especially not on top of the loss of consistency that is 75-card deck. I agree. If this agenda had said that you can run, like, out-of-house house only yes. events, That'd yes. be way then there's something There's here. something mm-hmm. huge there, yeah. Or you can run one copy of yeah yeah that that would be, but but as it is but as it is it's just like, not yeah. doing it. And it I, I, it's going to be binded. I so think, the idea in order to the speculation, which is to draw a cap yourself every mm-hmm. turn with this agenda, because the only thing it's doing for you is drawing you cards. Right. Um, you have to be playing events that you want to play anyway. You have to be playing events that are doing something on top of drawing a card. Mm-hmm. But the propensity to stuff your deck with events that are subpar mm-hmm. just to get that card draw. Is, is silly. Yeah. And it's a bad way to design a deck. <laughs> uh, so even if you stuff it with like 25 events mm-hmm. or 30 events, how many one of events are all going to be useful and consistent and good? And then you're just drawing into more of your watered down event heavy deck. Yes. Uh, so in, again, sadly, this to me triggers some kind of weird deck that is trying to chain out some kind of play combo. a bunch of weird events and make this combo happen. Mm-hmm. Whether that's I'm going to run all the desperate measures, much more type of effects that I can, whether it's every card, every event that discards my deck so that I can get it in the discard pile like mm-hmm. the Georgian deck's doing. Um, it feels, again, like one of those things that's really just kind of 
if it's going to be used at all, it's going to be used in an abusive way, not in like a yeah. good way. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Even just two copies would be, seems fine. Even just three. I mean, if you're going to 75, give us three of. Give us three. Draw cards, make it an event heavy thing. And again, who abuses that? Martel, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of. They uh, don't need card draw. It's kind of a weird <laughs> one for me, you know. I just. They do have problems hitting cap. Yeah, that's right. We've revealed 70 cards, but uh, Wait, we still I, got three to draw. I still have three to draw, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so overall, I, I think if nothing else, what you can say about this pack is that it it is juicy in the, the greatest uh, MVP sense of the word. Huge neutral card in Heron Hall. Huge yes. Targaryen card in Daenerys Targaryen. Great uh, wick. Starks get Blackfish, which is good. Prince of Dorne gets more silly combos online. Uh, Westerlands, Warren of the West, and Tyrion, all I think really cool yeah, all the theme supplements for Lannister here too. Yeah. Um, Greyjoy gets Great Wick. That's Set sail. unbelievable. Don't forget about uh, that. Actually, every house gets Great Wick. Every house gets Great Wick. Every house gets Great Wick. And then I think Rinley is a, a cool new addition to the Baratheons. The Cine Captain maybe is a spoiler card uh, for certain decks. And Warren of the South is an interesting Baratheon tool. Mm -hmm. uh, strong, interesting, precedent setting, precedent tearing down. Uh, booze, laughs, smiles. Booze it has or it booze? All. Booze. Boo. 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 Boo earns. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, guys. This is an ancestral home for Game of Thrones. It seems that things just continue to get crazier in this game. Uh, and remember, we do have some weird, uh, not weird, but expected <laughs> planned announcement at Worlds for how the future of this game is going to be handled, whether that's rotation or format shifts or new rule books, new cards, new boxes. We don't know, but uh, it could be any number of cool things no, blister or disappointing things. Yeah, right. Uh, so check it out. Ancestor Home is on our web store. You can find it there. And it's also here in Tulsa at the retail store if you want to come grab it. Uh, we do appreciate you watching. And if you want to subscribe, then we're not going to hold your uh, or tie your hands behind your back. Right? We, we certainly <laughs> we'll let you. You guys have anything to add? Ancestor no, Home? Exciting pack. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. See you guys.